Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Robert Noon, and I'm the editor of the journal Family Systems, which is um, published by the Bowen Center for the Study of the Families in Washington, D.C. And I have the pleasure today of interviewing uh, Ms. Victoria Harrison. Um, uh, and I'm doing this as a way to highlight a, an issue of the journal, which is um, going to be coming out in about two weeks. It is a special issue devoted to the topic of climate change and Bowen theory, and it's an expanded issue. Um, Ms. Stephanie Ferrara of the Center for Family Consultation is the um, guest editor of this issue. And we're really excited about um, uh, this particular issue. Um, it um, is really an outgrowth of a conference that was held it's a part of the spring conference uh, that sponsored by the Bowen Center uh, called uh, Creating a Climate for Change. And I can't imagine uh, someone that I would like to interview more about this than Miss um, Harrison, who um, was really one of the, uh, probably the leader in, in the planning for this program, this conference, and also the, responsible for the um, uh, well, overall thinking related to the shaping the conference, along with the committee that she worked with. Um, Ms. Ms. Harrison is a director of the Center for the Study of Fam Natural Systems in the Family. She is also a longtime faculty member of the um, Bowen Center for the Study of the Family in Washington, D.C. She wears a number of hats, being a clinician, being a researcher, being a director, um, and a writer. Um, so I'm delighted to have you um, talk about uh, this topic, uh, uh, Ms. Harrison. Uh, first, I'd like to ask you, uh, it was a very successful conference, I thought. And there was a lot of work that went into the planning and the presenters. Um, I'm just curious about what went into some of your thinking related to having a conference devoted to, to climate change and Bowen theory. Do you have any thoughts about that? Dr. Noon, several people in the Bowen Theory Network have focused for decades on the impact, impact of societal and environmental forces on the human family and on society. The New England program that Ann Nicholson has chaired is one. Pat Camella is another um, student of Bowen Theory who's primary focus has been on um, environmental and societal impact. That has not been my primary focus. But over the last few years, I've had the opportunity to attend conferences online and in person that focused on the impact of climate change in particular on human functioning and the human's impact on climate change. I thought it was very important to learn more about how Bowen theory could address, understand, and produce a perspective for change for changing the impact of climate change, for understanding and changing the impact of climate change. And um, I, I commend the Bowen Center for being willing to host a meeting with this focus um, in spring of 2020. No one was sure it would be well attended. It was a challenging meeting to organize because in the midst of planning this meeting with a terrific committee, COVID occurred and everything moved from in-person to online. So this was the first major meeting the Bowen Center held online and everybody put 100% effort into doing it and doing it well. It was a, a, a really good meeting. The papers were broad and addressed various aspects of the impact of the human on the environment and the environment on human functioning. 
um, I was so pleased when you and Stephanie Ferreira were willing to plan a special issue of the journal to increase the shelf life of the ideas at this conference. Climate change and its impact is not a short term problem. And the Bowen Center and the programs and the people who were important in doing this meeting agreed that it's important to keep the topic um, in focus over a longer period of time, both for thinking, but also thoughtful action. So um, I think that it is this issue of the journal will make a contribution in many ways to the ability to be thoughtful about factors that are difficult to see and keep in focus. My own, the paper that I presented and then extended to submit for this issue of the journal has convinced me that changes in the climate have been a part and an important part of human evolution and the evolution of life. We would not be here without the ability to react to experiences that threaten survival. The history of evolution is a history of those who do and those who do not survive. Changes, major, dramatic, cumulative changes in climate that occur outside awareness for the most part. So being able to sit with a volume of papers that are difficult to read, to read, put them down, come back to them, think about them, is going to be a real contribution to the ability to bring into focus factors that are having an impact on all of us all of the time, and to then use facts and an understanding of facts to develop thoughtful plans and thoughtful action is, uh, I think, a huge contribution to deal know, with I, the impact I, of climate change. Yeah, it's such a broad issue. And, and obviously, probably one of the most clearly the most important issues that we're faced with um, for the decades to come. Um, and so I'm glad that this um, conference, as you said, the shelf life will be extended. And I think it does make a difference for people to not just participate in a conference like that, but to be able to have a, a document. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to have all of the papers, um, but we do have a number of papers. This is the largest uh, issue um, of the journal that we've had, uh, which has been in effect, I think, for over uh, uh, 20 or 30 years. Um, and I guess, you know, one of the things that uh, I thought was so important about this conference, it's such a broad topic, and yet there was a focus in terms of what Bowen theory might contribute to addressing a problem like this. I think an underlying aspect of it had to do, what, what does one do about the anxiety of a a real threat that is occurring uh, on this planet-wide basis. And what can Bowen theory offer to individuals who are um, seeking to manage themselves in the face of this phenomena, as well as perhaps begin to think about how to address it and uh, take some action steps for themselves in response to this large scale difficulty that we're all experiencing. Do you have any thoughts about sort of this focus on that, that Bowen theory brings to the issue of climate change. I guess, you know, an underlying subtitle had to do with anxiety and its impact on uh, the impact of climate change on anxiety for the human. Well, that was um, one of the primary directions 
that the conference took. There were others as well. Um, you know, Dr. Bowen believed, wrote and said that man's disharmony begins with his disharmony with the natural world. And I think that is, when in, in Dr. Bowen's day, he was focused on population explosion and the overpopulation of the planet and the, the um, exhaustion of resources and its impact. Now, I think he would appreciate including climate and climate change as one of the outgrowths of man's disharmony with the natural world. Um, Dr. Bowen also believed that when the human could focus on facts, develop a factual perspective on a problem that we will activate solving it. Anxiety, as Bowen defined it, reactiveness to threat, real or imagined, anxiety stirs that kind of adaptation. It plays a part in symptoms. But once anxiety occurs and people can think about the sources activating anxiety, people can begin to problem solve and to uh, think about ways to solve those problems. I think the conference contributed toward that, the range of speakers who addressed population as well as climate change, population explosion, societal process. I think the conference addressed the reactivity to the environment in a way that lets us think about it and begin to formulate thoughtful action. The the human is also, it, well, it is human nature to avoid thinking about a problem. That has probably helped keep us alive since the origin of life. Avoiding a problem, avoiding a threat is a survival mechanism. And it is automatic and instinctive for us to do that. But avoiding a problem can also mean avoiding solutions. And so I think that looking at anxiety more broadly as a reaction to threat can assist people in recognizing and making choices about how we react to climate change, for example. But it's not easy. It's but not you think it would be accurate to say that uh... A focus wasn't so much on trying to avoid anxiety about climate change, but to use that anxiety in a thoughtful manner. That anxiety itself can can result in energy and uh, motivation to do something about what is perceived to be a threat. That it can have a positive function as well as a negative function if it's directed towards avoiding thinking about what we're faced with. Well, one of the <laughs> one of the biggest changes for me in doing an evolutionary uh, study of reactions to threaten the natural world was that I came to see anxiety as more of a plus, as an advantage to stirring adaptation than a pathology to be eliminated or avoided. It has transformed my understanding this research on evolution and anxiety has transformed my understanding of anxiety. That was an unexpected beneficial side effect of taking on this subject. And I hope that's conveyed in the article as well. So I think, yes. Um, well, I, I, well, again, thank you for this interview. We're gonna keep it short because this is going to be broadcast on the website at the Bowen Center. Um, I hope this will be um, uh, useful to people in um, subscribing to the journal and subscribing to this issue. Those who are subscribers of this uh, journal will be receiving this issue and it should be out in about uh, two weeks. 
Um, I, I look forward to that. The, the scientists that um, I spoke to in developing this subject are all waiting for their copy of this issue. And um, I think that people will find this issue helpful in addressing climate change and the anxiety that it stirs for us all. I think this will be a very useful issue. Well, let's hope so. Uh, and again, I thank you for um, your own involvement in um, planning the conference, shaping the conference, and then contributing to uh, what I think is really an extraordinary issue of the Journal Family Systems. So thank you very much, Ms. Harrison. You're welcome. Bye now.